Huh. Somebody needs to make a dust collector. And I think it's going to have to be me. As great as it has been to manually clean off tools or scooping it directly off the ground, we're using my cyclone separator and shop vac. It's time for an integrated dust collecting solution. The shop is small, so it shouldn't be too much of a challenge so long as I don't overly complicate things. This project end-to-end -end is a bit more technical. Likely uses the most varied materials and construction methods to date for myself, and has pushed the horizons of my design abilities much further. Short of the jet impeller I purchased for this shop edition, and the hoses and piping that I can't make, this is a custom build. So please enjoy the descent into this overly engineered, overly designed, and overly complex dust collector. To speak in more specifics, I've designed a collecting system based off of a thine, or theme, baffle? I don't know. In order to save on some vertical space over a cyclone separator. It would also be much more challenging to make a cyclone separator with my current tool set. I also planned the overall frame to save on horizontal space as best as I could, trying to stay within a two foot square. I might have abandoned that a bit with one of the components that we'll see later, but it was fun. All of the stock was cut to size using material from and at the same time as the tool bench build. As a result, some pieces are already to final size and shape, but there are a few that I manually cut here and there. Assembly is mostly from that prepared material or CNC parts. That about catches us up to what's going on, so let's get to the build. I'll chime in here and there when I do something dumb. It kind of looks like a toilet. Now that the wall mount is complete, I'm starting to build out the dust barrel cart, as I need some dimensions off of it for final placement. Quick check in with the last build. Even when fully laden, the tool bench is still mobile. Well, more or less. With the mount resting on the barrel and cart, I'm marking the location on the wall. Next, I'll attach the cleat to the wall so that the final placement is three inches higher. With the mount in place on the cleat, I added several screws into studs for more security and stability.
Couldn't help trying it out. I'd like to say up front that this is the simplified design for the dust barrel cart. I came up with an idea for a lifting mechanism that would be functional and very decorative, though I'm still debating replacing it with a scissor lift at some point. In the end, some pieces needed replacing with 3D printed parts, and technically some of them don't mesh together properly, but it still looks really rad. Oh, and it also works mostly, kind of. That's not the lifter, just a brace. A common theme in many of these CNC parts is using registration holes through the pieces, then gluing and screwing them together in thicker and stronger layers. This has the added benefit of creating complex, clamshell-like parts that can be securely attached to the overall assembly. Here's a clearance issue that came about moving a 3D model into the real world. I think I took a hacksaw to this after marking it with the metal clips. The heat is really doing a number on what I get filmed. Depending on the temperature, my camera can film as much as a whole minute at a time before overheating. Now that the parts are coming together, it's a bit more clear what I had in mind. Effectively, it's a worm gear jack that should convert the rotating force of the gear into a linear lifting force at the rack and pinion. Well, it looks great, and it functions, but not super well, and it's kind of a pain to get everything in place. I'm probably going to figure out some kind of scissor lift at some point. Knowing a bit about how this baffle and cyclone separators worked, I wanted to use a clear wall to examine blockages or other issues. Also, it's fun. I chose quarter inch polycarbonate for strength and for the previous requirement, and then bent it to shape using heat and a jig I made. The heat gun took forever, so I looked it up and not only is polycarbonate not flammable, it is self-extinguishing. And don't worry. I took a big sniff before I put on the respirator to inoculate myself. I started with an acrylic weld, but ended up using multiple adhesives. The intake to the thyme baffle is a three, technically four part assembly that clasps around the polycarbonate wall. In the final build I also used a boatload of silicone sealant. The polycarbonate wall is adhered to the top plywood, but only rests on the wall mount. If it breaks or I come up with an improved design, it should be easily replaceable. Now that the fine baffle is essentially complete, it's time to install all of the infrastructure. I made some simple rounded wall mounts that fit the 4 inch PVC pipe outer diameter and joined the two with some hanger iron. I wanted three different endpoints for the system. The first would drop on top of the tool bench and branch into two 2.5 two inch hoses for the miter saw, drill press, and other work at the tool bench. The second would branch out and end near the center of the garage ceiling. The final would terminate beside the tool bench nearer to the ground, with the goal being a node to sweep sawdust into the system. I've heard that Schedule 40 PVC pipe for dust collection can be problematic, because of the static buildup leading to a fire. I've also heard that that's not really a thing that you have to worry about. So I'm going to err on the safe side, and ground the system with screws at each of the junctions, and, and a few additional screws to break up long stretches. The connecting wire is then added to the ground of the house, and I should be good. With this much assembled, it's in a testable state, and I can't help myself. So it works pretty well, 
but it's not yet a complete system, and that lands me in the hardest last 5% of a project. All that's left is a large number of adapters between tools, hoses, and PVC pipes, and also a filter box that I have yet to even consider designing. The adapters went through a couple of iterations. A few models I made had incorrect offsets and needed corrected versions printed, but I'm pleased with their tolerance and the action between the two halves. That's another functional part added, so I gotta try it again. This setup can move a lot of dust, but in this attempt I think I discovered a limitation of this style of baffle and the reason for the filter box. Once the system gets overloaded by moving dust, it travels straight past the thine baffle, through the impeller, and fine dust flies everywhere in the shop. I don't think I could produce this overloaded state with dust pulled from an operating machine, but dropping a hose into a large pile of dust definitely does it. I have a few tools left that need adapters fit in this style, but most require enough design to warrant their own video. Which brings us to the final piece of the whole system. It began by purchasing three of the smallest filters I could get rated above MERV 10 from my local big box store. And then I planned the rest around those dimensions. When I had the idea in my head somewhat solidified, I decided to draw it up manually and see what extraneous details I could rule out. I could have made it faster in Fusion 360 or SketchUp, but sometimes we do things for the fun of it. The whole box is comprised of three panels that the filters will slide into, a backplate that will attach to the output of the impeller, a static end cap, and an end cap with a hinged door for maintenance. Oh boy, this project has been taking forever, and it's like 90 degrees out, so I'm going to try that clapping move to skip to the end of the build. Huh. Gonna have to practice that. The dimensions of the box, and its proximity to other things that are already on the wall, meant that I was going to have to get a little bit creative with how I mounted it above the impeller. I knew that there would be a little bit of space between the box proper and the wall, so I made some sort of platform to take up that space, and a couple of solid wood cleats to get it into position. I also thought that it might be a problem with this heavy of a box to settle onto the impeller, so I modeled up and printed off some parts to preload the setup off of the dust collector. In the end, I also put a screw through the wall mount so that there's no chance of it moving or falling off. And with this last step, I think that about wraps up the build. I believe it's customary for all of these videos to end with a I'm so excited about how it turned out, but I kind of don't feel that way. There's multiple parts that I want to swap out already, some pieces that I don't think work as well as they should, and to be honest there's a few components that I put together pretty sloppily. I need to put a curve in the ceiling connection node right here. Right now it droops a bit heavily and constricts airflow. and. Well, now I gotta fix this. Pretty sure I'm not using anything properly right now. The dust collection itself works great and is a huge upgrade over what I had been using, but I foresee a lot of changes in the future.